right? And I, I know we've talked about a, a, you know, joint accountability model here where everybody is going to take a piece of the solution. Um, and I, I doubt that you could put five of these suckers on the same ballot and expect to pass any one of them. Uh, so I think, number one, we're going to have to be selective. Number two, as I said earlier, some of these may not require voter approval, and that's indeed helpful if that's true. Um, thirdly, the redevelopment conversation, uh, you know, uh, that's a state legislative piece of business that's going to be statewide. It's not going to be Bay Area specific. And so that's going to be another way of generating some revenue um, that doesn't have to go through the voters. So I, I think we, we do need to keep the framework of trying to have everybody contribute to the solution. We just don't want them all on the same ballot at the same time. And to the extent that the legislature can chip in, to the extent that a fee approach can chip in, I think that's all to the good. Um, the, the other point I would make, and it's a bit of a response to Jennifer's uh, point, is that at least we don't understand our charge in terms of raising revenue to just be raising revenue for affordable housing production. Um, you know, that's one of the P's, but it's not, you know, there are the other P's as well. And our understanding is that the protection P has revenue requirements, the preservation P has revenue requirements. Uh, some of the other strategies about capping fees for local development um, will probably have some kind of backfill uh, revenue requirement. So uh, I, I think we showed you, in fact, a, a proposal about how you might cut up the revenue at your last meeting, and we probably should have included it in this meeting because I think that's another thing we've got to hash out is however much money we raise, who gets how much of it for what purpose, I think is still an open question as you raise.